Hey, what's up guys? Sheikh Sompedi here, Benny McCarthy from KZN to Manchester. Ricardo Goss finally joined Supersport United and then Bitsun Sumane Coach Series. What's that all about? Let's talk about it. Let's go. That's how it goes. They keep asking about the best when they know it's me. Okay. Asking about the rest when they know it's me. Straight in, I guess. You know it's me. Let's kick things off in Manchester. There was big news that was announced regarding one of our own, Benny McCarthy. Yep, he's gone there to the Premier League. He's gone to one of the most successful teams in the Premier League, which is Manchester United. And he's been appointed as the first team coach. And it looks like what he's going to be focusing on is getting the strikers to finish the goals. And see, Martial needs that, you would say. And you'd say Marcus Rashford needs that as well. I saw this news, you know, the first time it was tweeted out, I, I couldn't believe it. I thought, is, is it really true? It's almost as if like we're also waiting for confirmation that England has to say it because you really want your own South Africans to win so much that you just want it to be so true. And the crazy thing about it is he was just here. You know, he was just here in Mzanzi. I took a picture with him. Yeah. That's me smiling right there next to Manchester United's first team coach. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, I look at this move and for people who have not seen Ben McCarthy play, there's videos out there for people to see and see what kind of career he had. And I always say this to people that Ben McCarthy for me was the closest player we had to being labeled world class. Just in the way that he scored his goals, his movement, his awareness, it just was all there. And for someone who was also winning, winning a lot of trophies as well, he can bring that type of mentality to Manchester United. And one thing I love about him, he's an honest guy. He's an honest guy and he's ambitious. And I tweeted as well, you know, I stated the fact that if you saw how his career went, the fact that he left South Africa being so young and going to the Netherlands, and then eventually in Spain, and then that's when he made history in Portugal, and then there was still England, and then he came back here. You could just see how ambitious he was, the way that he accomplished his coaching badges, what he did with Cape Town City winning silverware, and as well as Amazulu finishing second, their highest that they've ever finished. You could tell that he is very ambitious and he wants to do a lot with his career. So I saw that coming, and it's an inspiration, and... I sit here and I think, dream big, guys. Dream big. You know, your dreams are never too small. And I also want to shout out to other South Africans that are doing it big all over the world. Quentin Fortune in the UK. Melissa Reddy in the UK. Bradley Connell in the United States. And last but not least, Peter Osmani, what he did in Egypt, winning the Champions League, well, luckily. It just goes to show that you can, you can become whatever you want to become. And your own dreams might just scare you. But what they're doing, it just shows you that it's possible. One of the inspirations that I spoke about, Bitum Smane, he made the news this week. His agency and himself announced a masterclass coach series. So what is that? They dropped a statement. This is what they said. A master class, by definition, is a class taught by someone who has expert knowledge or skill in a particular area. With this definition in mind, the team's intention with the master class series is to share their knowledge that they have gained through years of experience. The master class series with Coach Pito, Gabelo, Musi, and Cal is targeted at different football clubs football associations, and any interested parties. So judging by that statement, I read it as he's formed this group with these people and they will be going to different associations trying to help them in terms of coaching and raising the bar. It's a good idea. I think obviously a man who's achieved so much success having to win in Egypt, having to win here at home, possibly one of the most decorated coaches we've had from South Africa. So him going around is going to be very helpful for coaches within our country and maybe even in Africa as well, because 
They seem, they seem like they're willing to do it. And uh, it started off with Roy Lam. They put out a video. It was a bit of a surprise. They put out the suspense trying to figure out what's going to happen. But it was him going to Roy Lam and having to have the conversation with the three coaches that are there. For me, what it shows me is that Mamkiza wants to achieve. You know, she wants to compete, especially in the near future. You can tell that she wants trophies. She wants the league. That's what she wants. I sat back. I thought, okay, great. I'm happy for Pizzo. I'm happy for what he's trying to do because there's also the Pizzo and Samani schools as well. But also the fan in me sat at home and just thought, is this what he wants to do now? You know, I mean, are we, are we ever going to see him in the, on the bench again? You know, because that's, that's where Pito is in his mold. That's when he's a, he's a genius, you know. And that's what also made me love Pito so much. And I'm not going to lie, as a, as a guy who watches football, I miss having a coach of that caliber back on the bench. I miss having those interviews. I miss having those mind games that he would play, challenging teams as well, and making players better. So, I mean, it, it's an initiative that he's going to help out within Africa. I think he's, he's schools as well that he wants to do. I think that's going to help out as well. But Pizzo Spani, for me, a genuine plea is, I would love to see you on the bench again. I would really love to see you on the bench again. But good luck with this Masterclass series. And again, I plea, I would love to see you on the bench again. Seed Ramovic, the coach of TS Galaxy, news came out, picture was there. Signed a new deal up until 2025. I think it was coming, if we're being honest. I mean, I think I have to say, Team Sugazi would having to appoint him. I thought it was a masterstroke genius move in terms of the way that the team plays. They love the ball. The possession is there. And he saved the team from relegation comfortably so. And this is going to be his first full season. So it'll be interesting to see what he actually does with the team. And to be fair, Tim Sukazi also gave him some guns to work with. I mean, Swissu Villagazi, what a player. You know, he's left Mamluri Sanos, but I can't wait to see what he does. And also considering the fact that they're such a possession-style-based team, Olam Lambo as well, you know, the playmaker that he is, being able to move the ball from side to side if need be. A great relationship with Tim Sukazi, and I think also he's taken well to South Africa as well. I have to give him that, see Dramovic. I mean, sometimes he tries in interviews to talk um, one of our languages, whether if it's Zulu or whether if it's Ndebele, whether if it's Tswana, he tries, you know. So it's, it's something that is great to see that he, he loves being here. And I can't wait to see what he does. And I think he will be able to achieve perhaps not a relegation fight because I think there is quality within that squad. But all the best to him and his team. I'm a Bacanea, the happy people. Orlando Pirates have a new captain. By the name of Innocent Maella. I think they gave him this arm belt because he's been part of the squad for quite some time now. I think he's been there since 2016, 2017. So he's one of the longest serving members at the club. And he's got big shoes to fill. Let's, let's not beat around the bush. He's got big shoes to fill. You know, Lucky Lukwati and then Happy Jell and now you. I mean, we're talking about really good captains that are at the club and... I think he could make a great captain. I think he will be a club captain as well. The only interesting thing that I thought, now that he is captain, are we going to be seeing a lot of him on the pitch now? Because also the same thing was asked about Etumlin Kune in terms of now he was there being the captain of Kaiser Chiefs. Will he play more? I bring that up because I got some numbers for you. Last season, you know, San Mayela in the league only played eight league games. Eight. We didn't see much on the pitch. I mean, obviously, there were injuries as well. But but we must mention that uh, Pasaka Marco's form was, was unbelievable. Before that injury that he had, he was unbelievable. One of the best left-backs in the country. Um, and as well as also, Innocent Maela could play centre-back. But now, when you look at the acquisitions that have been brought in, you know, Koki coming in, Gosina Tsivisi coming in, Olisanda, I think he stays in that back line. He doesn't move. So... Even though he can play centre-back, will he be able to play? And the interesting thing is he was on the team sheet 19 times, but only started eight games. That's going to be interesting. So 
I think lucky for him, which is a good news, is the fact that there's a new coach, Jose, and perhaps Jose could prefer him to play at left back or could pre prefer him to play at centre back. We'll have to see what happens. But good luck to him and his captaincy role. Stellenbosch Football Club, the DDC team, due to the fact that they won the league here, they were allowed to go compete in the Premier League Next Gen Cup, where it featured teams like Nottingham Forest and as well as Leicester City. They are under 23s. And man, did they do it in style, man. I mean, they, they went there, they scored goals, and they won the cup as well. And look at it. Look at the results for yourself. Having to beat Nottingham Forest, having to beat Leicester, two games, 11 goals that were scored. I mean, they're cooking something special there at, uh, at Stellenbosch. And I think for me, it's so crazy to, to see how much freedom these youngsters play with. It's not just them. You've seen it with Kids Chiefs. You've seen it with Orlando Pirates. You've seen it with Sundowns, Chipper United. There's a, there's a freedom that these youngsters are always playing with. It's almost as if like the philosophy that's there should be at the first team. And I've always had the belief that South Africa's got talented players. You know, they've got talented players. You cook them right. If you coach them right, then you'll get players who will be able to compete with Premier League players. Of course, the youngsters are under 23s. And remember when I spoke about Stellenbosch's first team several episodes ago? The players that they were releasing, the age of those players that they were releasing, they were bringing the age down, the average age. And I think these kids that went there to England to show their talent will get first team opportunities. And I think the future of when you look at what's happening with the Disky Challenge teams, the future of South African football, I really do believe is in good hands. The Colin Black Label Cup is back. Yes, it's back, but not in the way we remember it to be. <laughs> so I think the PSA heard our cries and the fact that we wanted it to be new format. We wanted more teams to be part of this thing so that it could be more competitive. It always felt like, you know, Pirates and Chiefs were stealing the limelight. But now, <laughs> yep, it's brand new, new format. It's going to be more than just two teams. And this is how it's going to work. As you can see on screen, all 16 teams are eligible to take part in this thing. But the four most voted teams will play a mini tournament. So of the 16 teams, whichever team is voted the most by the fans will take part in this tournament. And it takes place on the 12th of November. So I look at this tournament and I thought of immediately the Telcom Charity Cup. Do you remember that? Do you remember those days of just being able to watch football throughout the whole day? The whole day. And that is what we're going to see. It's going to happen around the World Cup break. So, And to be fair, what AFCON also showed us in January is as much as there was football on, on TV, as much as the AFCON was playing, we did miss having to watch you know, DSTV Premiership or teams that we know. So around that time, if we're feeling a little bit, you know, where is Chiefs, where is Pirates or where is Stellenbosch or where is TS Galaxy or <laughs> you could have Maritzburg United competing in it, you will be able to see them. The only question is, will it be an annual tournament? But I do believe that this is a good thing that the Colin Black label are doing with the PSL in the fact that there is more teams that will be taking part in. It's just going to be a whole show. Like you could be able to go to the stadium and just be there and just watch football and create the whole family vibe, which is great to see. So I can't wait for it to begin 12th of November. Maybe, just maybe I might be there. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to dim the mood a little bit. So this past weekend, there was the Chan qualifiers, Bafana Bafana going up against Comores. But Fana Fana went through. They went through due to a 1-0 victory. Aggregate score. They won away. They drew 0-0. I'm dimming the mood because I watched the game and it, it, the performance was flat. The performance was flat. Like, I, I just was not... I was not encouraged by that performance. I'm being honest. I, I just was not encouraged. And to be fair, in their defense, they, the team had to change. You know, Helmut Keller had to make changes due to injury, uh, due to some players could not get called up, due to maybe passport issues per se, in the first leg, I mean. And obviously they changed in the second leg. But I wanted more. 
you know, I wanted more, and it's 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 no disrespect to Comores, but it's Comores. You know, it's Comores. I I wanted them to play a lot better. I wanted them to take their chances as well. And I think that's what also Helmut Kelly was alluding to as well in his post-match interview, having to speak about the players having to grab their chance. And I, I couldn't agree even more. You know, I couldn't agree even more. These players, as young as they are, you've been given the opportunity to play for your national team. You know, to play for your national team. I can't, I can't stress enough how much of a privilege it is to be able to play football for your national team. And, and I say this because I, I really wish I had the ability to play football. I really wish I did, but I don't. And I'm admitting to it that I don't. But when I see people, they get the opportunity, I would love for them to take it. And yes, yes, they got past Comores. They got past Comores and, and credit to them. But it's Angola next. It's Angola next. And it's going to be a lot harder. It's going to be a lot harder than what Comores was. And these boys need to be a Chan next year. They need to play. They need to play. Because this is our under-23s. This is in preparations for probably the next Olympics if possible. But they need to play. And they need to grab this opportunity. And that's the only message that I have for them. When is it going to happen? 26th of August, away. And then 4th of September at home. I will be watching those games because one is this month and the one is the next. But I plead to the players, please grab this opportunity. Please make it work because it could seriously change your career. It's that time for Bet of the Week. Now, Bet of the Week is a segment where I show you my bed slip hoping that yours lights in green as well, provided if you're going to be placing the same bets that I'm going to place. But this week, I've got four games. Four games, and I'm looking at the fact that club football will be back. Cape Town City going up against Sundowns, Friday night. The last season, they played two games in the league, and no goals were scored, and I think it's going to take one goal to separate them, or nothing. So I've gone with an under 1.5. Crystal Palace going up against Arsenal Friday night as well. I think Arsenal have been in great form for some reason. I just feel like Patrick Vieira just knows how Arsenal plays. So I've gone with a double chance, draw or Arsenal win. I don't think Arsenal lose the game due to the quality that they have. Fulham promoted going up against Liverpool. Liverpool very impressive in the Community Shield. The way that they played against Man City, I like that. And I think Liverpool carry it on and win that game. Tottenham versus Southampton. A game that provides a lot of goals. I've gone with an over 2.5. And that's my total odds of 6.71. Six times my money back. Yep, I'm going big. I'm going big. So that's my bet slip. If you are going to place a bet, don't forget to place it at betway.co.za. We've come to the end of the show. Wow. <laughs> it just goes so quickly. Like, I'm not used to it going so quickly. But as usual, I gotta leave you with something. I would like to send a shout out to Yunisa for offering all the girls of Banyana Banyana full bursaries to study. It's applicable from next year, January. I think brilliant. Brilliant. And last but not least, Clap Football is back. Oh man, I'm excited. I'm excited. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you're notified of future episodes. 